so you've made it through almost the entire government course. This lesson and the next lesson, we're going to sort of review what we learned in American government. I want to look at the, the key principles that make you American that say this is an American, this is what it means to be an American, um, and how we run our government is a huge part of that. And our ideas and our thoughts, you might not even realize that as an American you believe these things, but they go back to our founding fathers and our founding documents. So we're going to review the key principles you uh, you should know, and we're also going to look at the, the documents that they all came from, um, that students often get confused, things like the Declaration of Independence, the Constitution, Bill of Rights, things like that, and point out where these principles are in those documents. So... This is sort of just a general review. So the key principles that you should have learned in this class are self-government, limited government, individual rights, federalism, and separation of powers. Of course, you learned a lot more, but this is just sort of, I want to, these are the big ones. So self-government. A lot of countries, especially back then, were not self-governed. They were colonies, especially by England. Think about India. India was ruled as a colony of England for a long time. Americans have this idea that they do not want to be a colony anymore. We want to rule ourselves. And that's huge in our thinking as an American, right? We wouldn't tolerate it if some European country came over and invaded us and said, hey, guess what? We want to rule you. No, self-government is firmly ingrained in us as an American. We we are independent. So this started, of course, King George III of England when he started putting all those taxes on us and Americans, uh, the colonists said no, right? So self-government is this idea that we should rule ourselves. And of course, we still have that idea. We wouldn't tolerate it if someone came over and tried to rule us. Limited government. Again, we believe that the government should not be all-powerful. Think about those ideas of John Locke and the social contract, that the government gets its power from the people, not the, the other way around. The government doesn't get to dictate us. And the idea of limiting the power of the crown, creating that constitution which says the government can't get too big. This is very crucial in Americans' thought, is our idea that the government should be limited. When we look at other countries that have um, autocrats or are communists and have these big governments, that sort of goes against our grain as Americans of this idea that the government can't come in and tell me that I have to do something, right? They can't tell me, oh, well, you should be a cook. I don't want to cook. I want to teach. Nope, government says you have to cook. Government, the idea that the government should be limited and cannot tell you everything and dictate your life. That's firmly uh, a firmly held American belief, and it started back um, with the founding of America and the course of the Constitution putting those limits on the government, which we looked at in detail, and we'll look at the Constitution again in a second. What about your individual rights? I don't know any other culture that believes so firmly in individual rights. Probably you as a student even have these ideas that you're entitled to your opinion and what you believe. Individual rights are very big as an American. You have the right and the freedom to what do what you want to do, pursue your dreams without the government interfering, right? The government doesn't have the right to tell you what you can and cannot do. Those ideas come, again, back to the Founding Fathers, I think even further back to that, to John Locke and his natural rights, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness are going to come up again in the Declaration of Independence. So Americans are strongly individual people, and it goes back to our, the, the founding of our country, and it shows up in things like the Declaration of Independence. So let's look at those documents that students often get confused and are thinking, you know, I know that I believe in, in having my opinion and being my own person and the government can't tell me what to do. But when they try to put, well, where do those things come? Like, where did you get these ideas and what documents do they appear in? Sometimes students are like, oh, the Constitution. Okay, so let's hammer those down. So documents that you need to be familiar with and you should be able to pull 
um, those principles from are going to be the Declaration of Independence, Articles of the Confederation, Federalist Papers, the Constitution, Bill of Rights, um, thing, other amendments with like the 14th, 15th, and 19th Amendment. Well, we could even look at things um, like the Letter from Birmingham Jail, the Seneca, Seneca Falls Declaration, which has to do with a woman's right to vote, um, and then of course Supreme Court decisions as we get even more modern. So we start off with what's called our founding documents, where these ideas um, started forming and how we and definitely shaped us as Americans, and we can see that continuing into the modern era with these other documents that we will look at. So let's look at the first, let's go in order, right? Let's just start at the beginning. The Declaration of Independence, right? When in the course of human events, it becomes necessary for one people to dissolve the political bands which have connected them with another and to assume among the powers of the earth the separate and equal station to which the laws of nature and of nature's God entitle them, a decent respect to the opinions of mankind require that they should declare the causes which impel them to separation. The we want self-government, and the first step to that self-government is going to be the Declaration of Independence. We have to separate from England before any of our other values can come into, into play. Okay, so now when we've separated ourselves, we said, you know what, we're, we're not going to be a colony. We're not going to let the king boss us around anymore. We have to say, okay, now, well, what do we believe? What do we want our country to look like? And we lay that out in the Declaration of Independence, too. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal. That idea of individual rights, again, right? All men. Government gets its power from the people, not the other way around. Unalienable rights. Life, liberty, pursuit of happiness. Again, that idea of individual rights. From the consent of the governed. Now, here's a very limiting factor right there. We talked about limiting the government. We set that up from the beginning in the Declaration of Independence. We say we're going to limit the power to what the people want, right? If the government says, hey, guess what? We want to do blah, blah, blah. Do the people want it? That's incredibly limiting, right? We put a huge limit on the power from the, to say, hey, guess what? People hold the power um, from the get-go. So we go to war, right? American Revolution. We, we succeed in getting away from England, and we set up our own kind of government. And with that idea in mind that we don't want to replace a tyrant overseas with a tyrant in our backyard. We don't want to set up a king at home. We form the Articles of we form the Articles of the Confederation. That was our first form of government, right? We tried that out before we created the Constitution. And it was extremely limitedly limited government, right? There were no there was not a strong uh, central government. The states held the power because that was supposed to be closer to the people. Remember, we talked about what a confederation was versus um, what, a, what a federalism is. Federalism being where the states and a national um, government share power. Okay. We didn't talk very much about the Federalist Papers, but I want to bring the Federalist Papers up because the Federalist Papers outline a lot of our ideals and ideas that go into the Constitution. Because there was a fight, right? There was a fight between the Anti-Federalists and the Federalists. The Federalists said that you needed a stronger national government. You needed a federal government. Um, the states underneath the in the Confederation were too weak, right? Some of the states had their own armies. Some of the states were printing their own money. Um, so the Federalists are going to argue for a stronger state government. And in these arguments that they're putting for were um, defending the Constitution, other things come out too that we believe in and we, we can see and we should be able to see those as well. So the Federalist Papers were written by three men. They were written by James Madison, Alexander Hamilton, and John Jay. And they argue for a constitution, for a stronger federal government. 
they are divided up into leather, their letters or papers. Excuse me, they're, they're papers, and they're like paper number one, paper number 10, paper number five, creatively titled. So let's look at four of them. Paper number 10 is the first one, and it's just very simply going to argue for that strong federalism. Number 37, again, is laying out the problems of state versus central authority, or small states versus big states, rural versus urban. It's saying that when you have a country this big, there's going to be factions, right? You're going to have the problems of urban areas wanting one thing and rural areas wanting another, and you can't, and these factions are going to fight each other, and unless you have a, a, a stronger national government, you might end up in civil war. You have to have some sort of overarching, strong leadership, that being the federal government. And so he lays out those problems that can arise um, and how they can be solved with a stronger federal government in number 37. But don't forget individual liberty, right? That's the fear. If government gets too big, it's going to take away your freedom. Right? That's what the anti-federalists feared. They feared that if a government is big enough to give you everything and protect you, it's also big enough to take everything away. So how do you protect individual liberty? Separation of powers. Remember, we, we talked a lot about the separation of powers and how they work and checks and balances when we looked at the Constitution. And so that's why they're defending the Constitution. They said, you know what, we recognize that you need to protect your individual rights, and we can do that. And here's how, through separation of powers. So this idea of separation of powers that appears in the Constitution starts showing up in the Federalist Papers. The final one, number 51, again is laying out the structure of government, saying, you know, we can do this. We can we can have a stronger state, go, uh, a stronger federal government, and we can protect your individual rights um, as long as we have proper checks and balances and different departments doing different things. And that's what gives us the Constitution, right? And we've spent most of this class talking about the Constitution. And that's why I wanted to bring up the Federalist Papers, because the Federalist Papers is where these ideas really started to take shape, with these three men um, laying out these ideas and arguing for what would eventually become the Constitution. And so, of course, the Constitution will replace the Articles of the Confederation, and then we talked about, you know, what does Article 1 do? It lays out the legislative branch and how and what it does and what, what it can't do. Um, it even goes even further and breaks it up into a, a, a Congress um, involving the Senate and the House. All those things that we've already talked about. But again, this idea of separating out power is very American, right? This idea that we don't have just one king who does everything. Okay, that's something that's very American. I think um, kids, students take it for granted, even adults take it for granted, that in other countries you go there and there's one body of government, and that one body of government does everything. It's very American, this idea of separation of powers. But just to be sure, right, because again, this idea of limited government is so important, we want to make absolutely certain that our individual rights don't get trampled. So we add the first 10 amendments to the Constitution, the Bill of Rights. Okay, and I talked about how, the ones that you need to, to, you know, you should know all of them, but we went through these. The idea that you as a person are, are important and the government cannot take away certain things. So these are restrictions or limits on the government's power. It can't take away your right to free speech. It can't take away your right to bear arms. It can't take away the a freedom to assemble. So these are restrictions. The Bill of Rights is our restrictions on the federal government because, again, of that idea of limited government, protecting you from the government. 
So those are what we call our founding documents. And you should be able to, if you can sort of think it through logically, right, you've got to declare independence first to, to give us that ideas of, of self-government. That has to happen first, okay? So the Declaration of Independence lays those ideas out. And you need to recognize some things in there. And then after that, okay, well, what's the first form of government? The Articles of the Confederation, limiting the government and what went from there and the Federalist Papers and the Constitution and the Bill of Rights and blah, blah, blah. So it does follow a linear pattern and logically makes sense if you think it through in your mind how this all came up. And that might help you keep these documents um, from getting jumbled in your mind is to think about them logically in order and what they represent. So we have not lost this idea of individual rights. It may not have all been achieved in the beginning, right? All men are created equal was not achieved in the beginning with the Declaration of Independence. It wasn't until the Civil Rights Movement and Martin Luther King Jr. and the Civil Rights Act that um, African Americans fully achieved equality, right? And we see a lot of these ideas in a letter that uh, Martin Luther King wrote from jail in Birmingham. He went to Alabama to um, assist in some, uh, peaceful protests and he was jailed and he wrote a letter and in this letter he out he's giving reasons um, for why all men are created equal and why these um, civil peaceful protests are needed. So this continuing to achieve all that was originally set out in those original documents, all men are created equal. Um, equality, again, is not achieved for women, right? Women um, were not seen as equal to men. They couldn't enter into certain jobs as other as, uh, as men. They weren't paid the same amount. They couldn't vote. So the Seneca, Seneca Falls declaration um, is what they proposed and it was written in very much the same way the Declaration of Independence was written. The Declaration of Independence wrote and said, you know, hey, all men are created equal. King George, you're not treating us right because of X, Y, and Z, right? Well, the Seneca Falls Declaration did the same thing. They said, hey, women are included in that statement. All, it, men doesn't mean men. Men is a universal term for everybody. So you could supplement men and say everyone, right? The universal man. So all people are created equal, including women. And you're not, and the Seneca Falls Declaration says, and you're not treating this right because of X, Y, and Z. They laid it out in a very similar fashion. And, and drew on those ideas um, and patterns of the Declaration of Independence. And then, of course, as we progress, amendments are added. We get the 14th and 15th and 19th Amendments. These amendments guarantee African Americans um, equality. They give um, women the right to vote. They give um, prevent people from preventing people from voting. So. It's a process. We hold these ideas. The, the important thing is to remember and understand what your ideas are, right? What the principles are, which the principles you have as an American, and realize that through government and um, and history, we are working to achieve these these things. And you need to be able to recognize and see them happening, and be able to point them out in certain documents. So I hope that that was helpful in narrowing down some specific ideas and principles and narrowing down some very important documents that you need to know.